But well, let's uh, shift gears from that to a completely different conversation now. And many parts of the country are experiencing water shortages. And we want to speak this morning on the prospects of incorporating technology into water distribution to curb leakages. In studio with us is engineer Philip Holly, who is the Davis and Shatliff Technical Director. Good morning and thank you morning, for Michelle. making time for us on News Center this morning. I want to begin by a report, uh, with a report rather, by the Japan International Corporation agency estimating that in 2018 alone Kenya lost up to 430 million liters of water through leaks, bust pipes, um, theft of meters and that's quite a lot of money translating to 12.2 billion shillings in a year. Um, let's begin with the loss of this water being described as non-revenue water. What really is non-revenue water? Well, well um, non-revenue water is basically uh, lost water. You start with the production of water in, in the water treatment plants and that water is uh, transmitted along pipelines to the points of consumption. So at the points of consumption, we are charged for that water. Now what's lost in between the production and the point of consumption is what's called non-revenue water mm -hmm. or water that's lost without being paid for. All right. What is the impact then of non-revenue water on the human right of access to water for all? Yeah. Well, non-revenue water, as I said, is, is lost water and um, it's lost through different means. It's mm -hmm. lost perhaps through leaks. And um, you know, so if you have water that's, that's lost in a leak, it's, it's, it's going to waste meaning that um, as humans we, we don't have access to, to that water. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, let's speak about the impact then of non-revenue water on utility companies as well as the customer at the end of it because utility companies begin with a certain amount of water but yeah. this does not reach the, um, the consumer so this water is not billed, uh, is not billed yeah. uh, leading to losses for the utility companies. Um, on the consumers and uh, you know lack of water then would have to mean more expenditure, bringing in water bowsers and buying water uh, from donkey carts. What economic impact does this have? Well, um, the whole economy, if, if you really sit down and think about it, is based on water. Without water, human life cannot um, go on. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's start with uh, looking at the utility companies. They spend quite a bit of money paying their staff um, to produce this water. They invest a lot of money in the infrastructure, building the water treatment plants, um, building the dams, building the pipelines. Um, if this water is lost, um, they are not able to recoup that investment. Um, looking at the consumer side, uh, factories, for example, rely on water uh, to, to do their production. Right, right. Again, without them getting access to this water, um, with water shortages, they're not able to produce efficiently. So losing water through um, uh, inadequate infrastructure, through leaks and that sort of thing, really costs the economy a lot of money. Right, now we're talking more than 12, 10 to 12 billion shillings a year. What factors, um, from your point of view, are to blame for such high losses from either leaks or loss of meters through the water distribution channel? Well, the, there are several things that, that uh, result in leaks. It starts with the design of the infrastructure, mm -hmm. designing the water pipelines. Um, if you don't have a properly done design, um, pipes are prone to bursting and you lose a lot of water through pipe bursts. Um, if, you don't have, if, if your design uses the wrong materials, pipes can uh, rust, corrode and leak. So it starts with design. Uh, then we have um, maintenance work or construction works being done around pipelines. Mm -hmm. So if you have heavy earth moving equipment moving on top of major pipelines, they could cause those pipes to burst again creating uh, leaks and, and water losses. So, so that's one factor. The other factor is theft. People um, drill into um, pipelines to tap water for their own use. Um, people will also manipulate the water meters or you could have faulty water meters. Again, that all results um, in non-revenue water, results in water losses. Right. Um, the Nairobi City Water and Storage Company, for example, um, by 2018 estimated a loss of about 40% uh, of their water through these leaks. What then is the state of infrastructure, water infrastructure in the country as we speak? Um, there's, there's different um, levels of development in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Much of Nairobi's uh, water infrastructure, unfortunately, is still based on what was set out during the early colonial times. Right. That's about, what, 60 years now? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those pipes are metal pipes, steel pipes that have rusted, many of them leaking. 
Um, we have issues of cross-contamination from sewage pipes into water lines, right. and then we get cholera. Right. So our infrastructure, some parts of it in a, are in a pretty bad state. Mm -hmm. I know there have been a lot of investments to upgrade infrastructure in different parts of the city, um, but um, there are still places where we, we need to do a lot of work. Absolutely. It is possible then to leverage technology into reducing these water leaks. Japan, for example, um, has been able to leverage on technology as we speak. Um, the Anand Revenue Water stands at about 3%, uh, which is quite low. But what innovations in terms of infrastructure can Kenya adopt at this time? Well, before I go into innovations, I think there's no substitute for, for hard work. Right. We need to know where the pipelines are. That's, that's basic. You don't need uh, any technology for that. And um, a simple thing that we can do is have people walk along those pipelines and look for patches of green grass during the droughts. Mm -hmm. And that is an indication of where um, you have leaks. Are happening. leaks. Right, right. Um, so that's, that's the basic. We need to get those basic things in place. After that, there's, there's all sorts of technologies. Mm -hmm. You can uh, look at um, infrared uh, detectors. You can look at um, ultrasonic detectors to listen for leaks in pipes, mm -hmm. um, laser technology. There's all sorts of technologies that have been developed in cities across the world, not just in J Japan, but in, in the States, in, in the US, in Europe, um, to address um, water leaks, because it's a problem everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, you seem to say management has been a big issue because yeah. before we get to the technology, uh, just having early identification and detection of leaks uh, can lead to a lot. What would be the impact of early identification? Well, let's, let's look at it from a numbers perspective. Mm -hmm. Nairobi uses about, the, the figure I've heard quoted is um, 500,000 cubic meters of water a day. Right. Yeah. Now let's say we lose just... 0.2% of that, which is 1,000 liters of water mm -hmm. a day, mm -hmm. works out in a year to 365,000 liters of water a day. We pay roughly 50,000 shillings, I mean 50 shillings per thousand liters. Right, right. Um, a little basic maths, that's 18 million shillings a year. Mm -hmm. That's the impact of not um, checking these leaks. And uh, that is in just in terms of management really yeah, and, and, yeah. and early detection just basic management and you can save yourself 18 million, 18 million shillings. shillings and then the rest can be saved with um you know using technology and all these innovations that have been put in place but let's talk about the role of both the government and the private sector in this because is there support from the government in terms of policies to guide water technologies in yeah. the country I, th I think the government has done a lot of work in setting out policies there are lots of elaborate policies that have been put in place mm -hmm. since 2007 with the reforms of, of the water sector. What is lacking now is translation of those policies into actual action on the ground. And that's really where the gap is. Government needs to now to put in place the mechanisms to implement those policies, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, those procedures, systems, um, basically to, to get um, things going. Right. I mean, and other than really being on top of the job and ensuring early detection, what else can water utility companies do to ensure minimal water leakage? Well, um, there's, there's uh, types of uh, water analysis uh, systems that they can use looking at what they're supplying versus what they're actually charging for. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's quite a bit they can do in terms of just getting the right manpower in place as well, get, hiring the right people mm -hmm. uh, to look out for these systems. But I think it just boils down to being effective and efficient. At, you know, they're at they're looking jobs. at this report, um, I mean, 430 million litres of water is a lot of water. Yeah. And this is a country that has been termed as a water-stressed country. I mean, 42% of Kenyans uh, do not have access to drinkable water, while 42% of the water termed as non-revenue water is actually drinkable water. Yeah. Talk to us about how we can leverage on this. I mean, it is a lot of water to lose for a country, losing yeah. lives yeah. because of lack of water. Yeah, and if, if you look at um, other water scarce countries um, in the world, a country like Israel, for example, um, they have much less water than, than Kenya, mm -hmm. but they put mm -hmm. in place every single mechanism they have uh, to use what they, they, they can access and, and, and put it to productive use. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're losing just under half of our water and half of our po population is, is, doesn't have access to water, we have a serious problem in terms of what we need to do to, to, to get um, 
uh, people having water. All right, we're talking about technology, of course, private, uh, public-private partnerships yes. um, would be quite a viable model here. Uh, but talk to us about really the specific impact on technology here. Do we have technology, for example, that, you know, instead of having vigilant officers walking across the pipelines or along the pipelines, tells you there is a leak at point A, there is a meter theft at point yeah. B to leverage on this issue? Yeah. So um, some of the technologies we've looked at at Davis and Shirtliff are s systems, for example, that you can place on your incoming water meter. Mm -hmm. And it, it just uh, takes a record of all the water flowing through it. And using artificial intelligence, it can work out what are the signs of water leakages. The patterns, for example, if you have uh, water b going through your pipeline at 3 o'clock in the middle of the night, that's usually an indication of uh, water being lost somewhere. So systems like that that can give you just quick reports uh, to tell you, hey, there's, there's something wrong here, we need to look into um, water use. Those, those are some simple technologies that can be looked at. Mm -hmm. Other things that um, people can do, um, there's special acoustic meters. You can connect them to your water pipes and the sound of a water leak has uh, a peculiar uh, signal that can be picked up by um, detection equipment. And again, that can give you reasonably precisely uh, whether there's a leak and how far along the pipeline that leak is. So there's stuff like that available. All right. Uh, what future then do you see in Kenya's water distribution chain should technology be incorporated? Well, for one, I don't think we have any options. We have to put in place technologies and systems right. mm -hmm. to manage our water because we have a growing population and that population requires water. So we don't have an option. We've got to get better at managing our water infrastructure and maintaining it in the best condition pro uh, possible. Mm -hmm. That means we're going to have to make a lot more investments in technologies um, to detect leaks and to, to sort them out before they become big problems. All right. Many thanks for speaking to us. That is uh, Engineer Philip Holy Davis and Shotliff Technical Director. They're speaking to us about ways of incorporating technology in water distribution to curb leakages. And away from that, uh, Chief Justice David Maraga has called.